Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending November 21st. This TDD report I'm going to make a little different than the typical one. I'm not going to talk about gadgets or current articles in the news or things like that. I'm going to talk about two different subjects I've had on my mind, and they have to do with science and technology and the future. And it may end up making this TDD report a lot shorter than normal. It may be longer than normal. It just depends on how long it takes me to talk about what I'm going to talk about. So anyway, this friend of mine, his name is Max L, and I saw on a social network site, and I've seen it from other people too, he was talking about the fact that libraries are turning into, some of them are turning into no-book libraries. And I'm not talking about the same thing as I was talking about a few weeks ago about the technology center in Omaha that was being built that was just a technology center specifically for that purpose, and it had give people access to different technologies such as 3D printers, computers, things like that. I'm talking about taking an existing library that's full of books and basically just getting rid of the books and dumping them out and then the people would still be able to have access to the materials but it would be using these type of e-readers or computers something like that so it would be changing the format of what the library actually is and to me that creates quite a problem if we stay with that trend. The very first of them that I read about was I think about 2012 maybe it was in San Antonio, Texas. They took a library and changed it into a notebook library and then Max said in his library they're going to change it as of next year in October so they're getting rid of their books and he actually went to the library and bought a bunch of the books because they're dumping them at a real low price and then the rest if they don't sell them they're just going to totally get rid of them and then they'll still have them in the e-reader form. Well, that leaves you kind of vulnerable to future disasters now. I know people don't really think about that, like what happened back during the days of the Black Plague and things like that where you lost a big percentage of the human population. And through medicine and through modern technology, we'd be able to keep those kind of things from happening. But will we be able to do that forever and ever? I don't really think so. I think eventually we're looking at the time that something is going to really slap the human race down and we might end up at another period of time to where we only have a few million or maybe even a few thousand people left and we need some kind of technology to actually help us get out of that so that we don't end up having to totally reinvent everything from scratch. So if we're relying on electronic devices and computers and things like that, that's not going to work too good when there's only a few thousand people left or however many people are left. The, the, the systems are going to break down. We might not even have electricity. We might be so busy caring for people and burying dead bodies and there just might not be the people left to even run it and keep it going. And the best and easiest technology to use is always technology that only requires human eyeballs. And that's either a book or a magazine or something like that where the stuff is written down. And you can have pictures, you can have diagrams. And basically we could, if we were in that state, even if we were like the, the, say, the saying goes, if we were blown back into the Stone Ages, we could come roaring back out probably within a couple hundred years and be still back up to the same level of technology and have the same advantages if we had the knowledge to be able to do it. But we do need that knowledge. And if the disaster doesn't knock us down so far that we just can't recover from it. But um, to me, eyeballs always went over computers or any other kind of device. You pretty much have to have some kind of a format or something like that, and you need to have it spread out throughout the area too. Suppose part of the United States is hit really hard and part of other countries are hit really hard and you only have some remote areas. You have to give those people access to the knowledge and the ability to be able to develop the technology again and to do things in an easier possible way. And to me, I think it's essential to our future survival as human beings that we keep places like libraries with actual physical books going. I'm, I'm not sure if this is a trend that's just going to keep on or if this is just a trend that each library district is only going to do a few of them and still keep physical books but I I really think we're creating a danger for ourselves. if if I was to come back a hundred years from now which you know, I'm not going to live that long but say if I was to come back a hundred years from now and see nothing but ebook readers and things like that and just no books to be found anywhere other than maybe just a few few little places here and there I think we're kind of doomed as human beings as far as the future and the next thing I wanted to talk about was machines becoming smarter than humans. They were talking about that as a possibility, too, that machines could become smarter than humans. Let's look at the way machines operate, and we've had to deal with this since a long, long, long time ago. Let's look back to the 1800s and machines back then. There was a group called the Luddites. They were people that were hand weavers, very talented people, could weave really great 
intricate patterns of different colors and things like that, but all of a sudden they got very, very pissed off when these automatic looms were coming along, and you could have a person sitting at one of these looms that had very little training at all, maybe a, a day or two worth of training, and they could weave the same exact kind of cloths and patterns and rugs and curtains and all kinds of things like that and do it a lot faster than the hand weavers could do it. In fact, they got so pissed off, they attacked the places, they attacked the shipments of the automatic looms. It even created such a stir in the northern part of England. They had to send in the military to quell a, a small-scale riot of these people uh, that didn't want to see this technology coming. If you actually look at things like I have a, a simple screw jack out in my garage, it's just a simple screw jack technology that goes back over maybe a thousand years but it has the ability to lift a 2,000 pound car. You know, it's much stronger than a human being and it's just a, a piece of equipment is all it is. No uh, computerized, no brain, no nothing than that. So we've been living, you got trains that run, you know, you got things that work faster than human beings, trains, cars, stuff like that. We're not all in a panic now that these, you know, machines are so much better than us, All even though technically they are. These machines are a lot better than us at going fast and hauling heavy loads and things like that, but it doesn't freak us out. It doesn't, you know, cause us to want to get rid of the technology or anything like that. So I think just like we got past the machines being stronger than us, we can actually get past the fact of machines being smarter than us. I mean, even in some ways, machines are actually smarter than us now. They can calculate faster than us, and that's a type of smartness. It's not the same kind of smartness as uh, a lot of different human endeavors, but yeah, just, just doing calculations quicker, being able to run spreadsheets and things like that. So in, in some limited ways right now, machines actually are smarter than us. We're going to have to get to the point where we're going to have to deal with it. And I've seen these things on the social media too, where you would come into a place like McDonald's and there might only be one cashier for the entire McDonald's, maybe one or two, two staff members total, and the rest is going to be automated. You're going to order in a kiosk. You're going to go up and basically your order is going to be spit out by a machine put together by a robot. We're just going to have to find a way to deal with that. I don't know any other way. We don't really want to go backwards, I don't think, in technology. But my question is to people, do you maybe want to go backwards? Would you want to actually make laws or put some kind of restrictions that businesses actually couldn't use robots or anything like that? I can see in the future... For example, three blocks away from me, there's a super Walmart being built, and they say it's going to need to be, it's going to need to have 150 employees or so to be running it at any one time. And it's a huge, huge building, it includes a gas station, full grocery store, and the thing is just so big. I mean, you, I'm going to, I'm going to end up walking around in it, but just seeing it from the outside, this thing is absolutely huge. It's just the the size of it is just amazing. I can see in the future maybe only having a skeleton crew of maybe three to five people to run it. You could have automated stocking machines, you know, some kind of robots or something like that that automatically keep the shelves stocked. And basically you'd have maybe one customer service agent, one manager of the store, and then two or three other people to make sure the robots are fixed or if a robot breaks down to take the place. But I can see those going from 150 employees to just five employees. So I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about it and, and see what you thought about it. Uh, we're going to we're gonna all see machines being smarter than us in any way. In fact... I think once that happens, the next thing we're going to look for is can machines be more creative than us? Is that possible or not? I don't know. We'll get to the point to where a machine can actually do things like write music, actually produce a movie, actually make sculptures that aren't just copies of something. Sure, a machine right now can do an exact copy of something that's rather simple and you don't even need that smart of a machine to do that. But can a machine actually do something and interpret it in an artistic form, make a, make a sculpture that's an interpretation of something so-called beautiful or, or things like that. So I think in the future that's something we're going to have to really think about. Are the machines, you know, going to be that way? And I'm, I'm going to get into other things and talk about them in the future possibly too. But right now I just wanted to ask you too, as an answer to this in your comments, if you would think about it, do you want to see laws banning robots or some type of human replacement machines in stores and factories? Would you want to see that in the future to try to hang on to... Uh, what human beings can do and do we want to go back to the time of maybe going all the way back to human power only I mean to me that's the only way to really solve it I mean we as human beings we decided that you know walking wasn't good enough for us so we had horses around so we jump on the horse and go a little bit faster with a horse until we could build a machine that went even a little bit faster than that you know how far back do we really want to go and do we want to make laws restricting the technology so if you get a chance answer in the comments but 
those are a couple of subjects I wanted to talk about, and in the future, as I feel like talking about certain subjects, I'll just take a TDD report, and instead of doing the normal format, I'll just do it this way. So I hope you enjoyed this as something different, and next week I'll be back to the regular format. I've got some material in the works and some things that people have sent in, so we'll get back to the original old format of the way the TDD report was. But um, if you listened this far to the end, I thank you for... Uh, for bearing with me for a different way to do it and let me know if you if you like more of these I'll try to do more of these it just depends on if I have the idea to do it too I can't just necessarily pull them out of thin air that I do them because it's something that I've been thinking about for a while so take care everybody I appreciate you for listening I appreciate you for contributing and I will catch you next week <laughs>